This is the Truth Network. Hidden treasures of the 119th Psalm. We get to the might verse, that section, and actually this verse may be one of my most favorite in the whole psalm. <laughs> and so I'm sure you'll clearly see why this is the anointing of might when it comes to the idea of the letter Zaddy. And clearly Christ had this in so many different ways. But anyway, verse 140 reads in English, Thy word is very pure. Therefore, thy servant loveth it. <laughs> And that is so true. Like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Um, the interesting thing about that verse is, of course, it's going to start with a zaddy, like we we know it would. Um, the the word pure there is the word that starts with a zaddy, and actually, interestingly, mostly that would normally be considered a verb, not an adjective, to describing the word as being pure. But it's actually a verb that has to do with smelting. Actually, the whole idea of the purification process of how you would, you know, get rid of dross. <laughs> and so, um, and, and so a lot of times this is translated, you know, thy word is tested or tried uh, because again, they're trying to get uh, the idea of what that word is in Hebrew, which is a verb, but here it seems to be an adjective. <laughs> so I'll let your mind work around on that. It's really cool to think of all the different possibilities of how the word does purify us and does test us, but by the same token, it is very pure. And it gets back to that concept we talked about of thy word also being connected to the manna in the desert. You know, <laughs> give us this day our daily bread. I'm sure when you uh, pray the Lord's Prayer like I am, I'm asking for those words that are our daily bread. And the idea of the manna there that the, the Jews teach, which I think is beautiful, is that this manna was so pure it was exactly what your body needed that when you ate it, it would go immediately. It would never make it to your stomach because it was the second it touched your mouth, it was exactly what every cell in your body needed. And it was absolutely pure, pure, pure <laughs> so that it would go right to what you need. And there was no dross. There was nothing left over. And, and that when we get the idea of the word of God, um, Jesus is all that he needs to be and not one little bit less. <laughs> and so it is with the word of God in so many different ways. You know, it's purest of pure. And, you know, the neat thing is how does this actually, you know, work out as it, as it purifies our life? At the same time, it is pure. So, you know, I, I don't know if you're like me, but when you finally get something biblical in your mind, it goes into your soul and it just becomes part of you. Well, I had a real struggle, is my example of this, how the word both was totally pure to me and I actually was able to consume it and have kept it ever since, was I had a real struggle with the word grace because it's used all over the place. I mean, so many things are his grace and we're gonna say grace and, and, and uh, I was actually listening to a sermon uh, series that, that the pastor that our church was doing um, at the time, and he was going to do a year on grace and all these different passages that had to do, to do with grace. And the more he taught on it, the more confused I got. And so <laughs> I decided, you know, God, you're going to have to help me with this and began to pray, God, show me what grace is. And, sh and, and I began to study the word and I got the idea of favor and it kept coming back that no matter how you look at it, that this had to do with favor. And then one day I was actually, <laughs> and it's interesting, it's like when you begin to meditate on a word or you begin to meditate on the word, you know, God will bring something into your life that just illustrates it beautifully. And all of a sudden it rockets into your soul. Well, this happened to me and the word grace. I was watching a movie with my granddaughter. It was called, uh, as I recall, um, Barbie, <laughs> the sea princess or something like that, the mermaid princess. Um, and the idea was that, that Barbie had been born uh, as a princess but was stolen away by some even evil um, Ursula type characters um, that had kept her from her father, the king. 
But she had this sort of magical power as the princess that she was that she could, you know, essentially command pearls. She could put pearls wherever it is that she wanted pearls to be. <laughs> and the way this worked out is that she got invited to the, to the royal ball somehow and and she decided to, you know, not check with the people that were watching her and go to the ball with her friend. Um, and, and so when they're on their way, they come across this stonefish. <laughs> and this stonefish is like the most poisonous fish in the sea. And it's a hilarious scene. And the stonefish, you know, confronts them like, I'm the most poisonous fish in the sea. You need to stay away from me, blah, blah, blah. But he had a really squeaky little voice. <laughs> and Barbie... In spite of how mean and ugly this stonefish was being, Barbie treated this stonefish like he was her favorite. Oh, Mr. Stonefish, don't be so mean. You know, she, the way she started talking to him, like, you need friends. And so she, <laughs> you know, he has all these poisonous barbs all over him. So she puts, you know, commands these pearls on all of his steel, <laughs> on all of his poisonous barbs so he can't, you know, you know infect anybody. And she goes, now you could be, you know, friendly with your fellow fish, <laughs> which really upsets the stonefish at first. Wait a minute, I can't be, you know, it took away his identity that he was this poisonous character. And, and through her grace, right, he became, oh, throughout the movie as you watched what happened, because she kept on treating him like he was a good guy. And he became a good guy because of her favor. Right? She treated him like he was this wonderful, beautiful person throughout it. And as I watched the transformation, I realized what grace was. Like, oh my goodness, when I'm around a truly godly person, I feel like I'm their favorite. And they bring out the best of me because that's their expectation of me. And it's as if they know me better than I know myself. It's like my pastor, Pastor Quartz, um, I, I, I can't tell you every time that I talked to the man, he always brought out the best in me because he, he looked for the best in me. I mean, it, I was his favorite. And so as I got this idea of the word favor, and, and you know, in Isaiah 61 where it says, I'm going to declare this, the year of the word's, Lord's favor, which, by the way, is not the word grace in that particular case, but it's the year that Robbie is his favorite. And what, the more I studied the word grace, which has to do with Noah, the more I realized that grace found favor. In other words, God saw in Noah that he was his favorite and all that, just like the Barbie character. And all of a sudden, the idea of like his grace or saying grace, like, man, I'm a, this is my favorite food right here. <laughs> like, I'm going to really favor, you know, because it's God's joy to feed us. And, and, and then, then what hit me home more than anything else when it has to do with grace, and I could talk on the subject forever because I just love it, is in John chapter 1, you might remember that John says that Jesus is full of grace and truth. And so I started to multiply in my mind all these people that I just love to be in their presence because they treat me like they're, I'm their favorite. And you might remember me talking about Miss Beck, my 97, well, she lived to be 104, and she would bring out the best of me in so many different ways because she just treated me so gracefully that, that I thought, wow, you could take that feeling I had around Pastor Quartz or I had around Miss Beck and multiply it by about a billion because Jesus is full of grace <laughs> and truth because Miss Beck and Pastor Quartz would always tell you the truth, but they did it in such love and such favor. It was unbelievable right? And so what I'm saying is when I got the idea of the, the purity of the word of grace, and when I began to see what it was and got the concept, oh my gosh, not only was it so pure that my soul could completely consume it, but as you can tell, it purified me because guess what? As when I'm around other people, I try to be, you know, and I, I fail all the time, but I try to remember this idea, man. This is my favorite right in front of me, right? Just like every one of you listening right now, I, I want to think as I'm sitting here doing this podcast that you are absolutely my favorite. I mean, I, I am so grateful for you listening and, and I pray that as, as, as you join with me in these words that you'll see, oh my goodness, every single word is pure. And every single word has this kind of power. Oh, if we could just understand it all. So, you know, I, I, I couldn't agree with the psalmist more when it comes to the might of the letter Zaddy. Thy, thy word is pure, therefore thy servant 
Love it. 